Welcome back Nintendo Collectors, I'm Alex, we're back in the games room and this week we're going to do a really cool gameplay of a really cool game called Hagane, so stay tuned for that guys. But before then I just want to update you on the channel, um, I'm going to be moving this room right round, rejigging it all. So I've got three of my arcade machines down that end of the wall underneath the Nintendo sign and where my red tent is here I'm going to have a, a little two seater sofa and on this wall here my LCD and my CRT TV so I can play some console games and I just have a better setup all around really because at the moment it's, it's more catered for the arcades they're pretty dominant in this room and you know what I've had my time with Popeye and Donkey Kong 3 I need to move them on I just keep my favourites um, but I do as I said last week I am planning to to uh, get another Popeye for next year which I'm going to convert into a Sky Skipper because you know I'm doing the Sky Skipper uh, mod. It's an ultra rare Nintendo game. It's nearly there guys and I keep saying it but honestly it, it, every every week I get an update, every other day I get an update on what's happening with the PCB. We're moving closer with getting the game up and running and honestly it could be this weekend. I'm really hoping um, I can have a video for you next week of it up and running. It'd be so cool. So for now guys um, well, in the future, these videos might just be of me moving stuff around this room because I might not have time to do a gameplay video, so it might they might not be that exciting to watch. But you know, I'm not going to have time or space. I'm going to have to box all these games up and move the cabs down there, cut some shelves, do some painting. I've also got revival coming up, and I've got to sort out my space Firebird cocktail arcade machine, get that ready for the for the uh, event. So lots going on guys, um, if I can get a video in I will, if I don't you know what I'm up to, I'm, I'm pretty busy. But I will try and just get a like, little diary in of the room changing around and it uh, might be interesting for you guys, you know if you've got a games room you want to decorate or do up or have some ideas for, you know I might have some ideas for you here on this channel. And if you've got any ideas guys, you know, just give us a buzz man, open to all comments. So that's it guys, let's get on with the pickups. Right, so we've got a few pickups this week. Um, I did a car boot last weekend. Um, I am struggling to get to car boot these days because I just find them so hard to find anything. There's so many people looking for retro games and God knows all the little tooties of the world coming around looking for video games. Never used to be like that at all, used to come back with bangs and stuff. Those days are well gone, unfortunately. But you know, it's um, they're only doing what I used to do. But unfortunately, it's just so many people doing it. It's not enough really to go around anymore. So I came back. I went to two car boots. Went to one on Saturday. Uh, didn't get anything at all. And one on Sunday, and I managed to pick up this little beauty. Now it's funny this game because I, obviously I remember the film. I remember the arcade machine. I remember playing the arcade machine, but I never remember. This or any of my friends having this tabletop version of the classic game Tron. Can you see that? Obviously, it's what is it? 35 years old, probably 30 years old. It's a little bit grubby. The, the screen's got a few little scratches because it's only perspex. Got to expect a little bit of that unless it was boxed. But it's in great nick, really. Other than that, um, and it works. So I've had a couple of little games of it, it's quite cool, I, lo I love the life cycle bit in the game, which is what it's playing now I think. That's quite cool, I think there's three different games in there, maybe more. I quite like it, it's pretty cool actually, and they're going for quite a bit on eBay actually. Probably get about 30 quid for this I would imagine. It's the rarer one of the of the lot of table tabletop games that Grandstand bought out. I always remember having Caveman, that was my favourite. I still think that's probably the best out of a lot, gameplay wise. It's really good gameplay in that tabletop version. I also like uh, Firefox, that's really cool. Uh, what was the other one? Scramble was a good one. And Asteroids was a classic one with a sort of curved screen. A bit like, I think they were trying to get that, ve that vector look, you know, the arcade game. But these were great back in the day. All us kids had them. You know, before we had computers or consoles, you know, if you had your favourite arcade game and you could now have it in your hand with one of these, it was really, really cool. 
So yeah, it's really tough to get that. I don't know what I'll do with it, whether I'll sell it or not, I'm not sure yet. It's pretty cool though. So yeah, that was my only car boot pickup, guys. The rest are all off eBay. And a um, few Amiibos here. Let's do the Amiibos first, just have a look sick with coffee. Um, these ones I should have bought in the beginning. They came out probably in the first wave, I think. Yoshi did, yeah, it's number three. So it's probably the first wave of Amiibo. And I didn't pick it up because I thought it would be one of those that would be easy to find later on. Which it was, really. And, you know, I managed to get all the rarer ones first. So, let's do the unboxing, guys. Can't leave any of them in the box. I'm nearly there. I think I'm about 41 now. And with these three here, I'll have 40... Fuck fucking count. 44. Which is cool. I'm missing about three still. So here we go, his little Yoshi. Not one of the best amiibo, but I mean he's cute. <laughs> he is what he is. There's not a lot of detail on him, but you know, it's another one to add to the collection. It's pretty cool. I'm not sure about his pose, but he can go up there with the rest of them. The next one again is a bit of an odd one, Luigi. Um, I'm just trying to think where that pose is from. I can't think where I've seen that pose. I haven't got the new Super Mario. There's, a, there's like a Luigi version, isn't there? Of the Super Mario Brothers on the Wii U, where you can actually just play the whole game through as Luigi. Perhaps it's from that, I'm not sure. I haven't got that version. I bet that goes for a lot now. It was quite a, a limited edition, wasn't it, of the game. So they always have a bit of a bugger to get out sometimes. Here we go. Let's just move that camera down a little bit. It's a little bit too high. That's better. Right, here we go. Luigi, see what I mean? He's in a bit of a, he's in flight mode. He's about to jump off, swoop down on you from somewhere. He's quite cool though, look. He's got that kind of cute little face about him, hasn't he? Bit of an oddball, isn't he? Bit of a nerd sort of a character, a bit like me, I guess. <laughs> um, so, yep, yeah, that's that one. And the next one has just come out. This is uh, the latest wave of Amoeba, I believe. What number is this? This is Me Too. Is it Me Too? I'm sure it is. Yeah, Me Too. There we are, guys. You can see the box before I start ripping it apart. They only just recently added this character to uh, Smash Brothers in the last month. I haven't played him actually, or her. Not quite sure which one it is, but it's pretty cool. It's got a cool stance going about it. Um, I'm hoping, I'm still hoping to, they bring out the um, Rue from uh, Street Fighter. That'd be a really cool amiibo to get. Such a great game, Super Smash Brothers. Absolutely love it. So cool. Here we go, guys. Me too. He's got like a sort of ninja. He's got a long tail. I'm not even sure what game this is from, you know. It's probably Pokemon or something like that, but I don't know the character at all. I really don't. It is a bit of an odd one. I bet it's Pokemon. It's got to be. Comments below, guys. Yeah, a bit of an odd one, that. Still, it's another Amiibo. It's quite a big one as well. A big character. So that's it on the Amiibo front. Um, I've got a NES game. Um, you know, I really wanted this on the Famicom because this is part of the Namcot series. Or Namco. Namcot in the, in, the, uh, in Japan. Sorry, Namcot in Japan. Namco in America as we know it. It's Kung Fu Heroes. Never played it. Um, but I just took a, a lucky dip on this on eBay and I just managed to win it. So uh, I'll be giving that a go. Hopefully at the weekend. See what it's like. Whatever growing Nez co uh, collection. Uh, next up is a Super Nintendo game. Mickey Mania. 
I picked this up for 11 quid on eBay. It's in pretty good nick, guys. So I just thought I'd take again another little sniper at it on eBay. And I won it for 11 pounds. Obviously not a very popular game. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? Is it a bad game? I don't know. I haven't played it. I know one of these Mickey Mouse games is really cool. I can't remember which one it is. Um, it's probably not this one. But it's got some cool box art by Capcom. Is it by Capcom? Sure it is. No, it's by Sony. I thought this was a Capcom game. I'm sure they had a, a Mickey Mouse Capcom game. Perhaps uh, they lost the license. I'm not sure. Um, again, comments below, guys. I haven't got a clue about this game, but for 11 quid in this condition, I thought it was pretty good going. Really chuffed with that. <clears throat> right, the next two are really, really special, I think. Let's have a look. Have we got anything to open it with? I did have something here to hand. Have I lost it? Have I brought it down with me? I bet I haven't. Uh, right, hang on, guys. I'm just going to go and get something to open this box with. And it's going to have to be a screwdriver. That's all I've got. Oh, I'm not very well organised tonight. So it's come through the post today. And I'm pretty sure I know what it is. This is Alex's way of unboxing with a screwdriver. Not the best way, but it's only a bit of uh, masking tape and cutting on the surface. And we're wrapped up with a bit of black paper. Oh, 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 I know what this is. You guess what it is, guys? <laughs> I've been after this for a while. Do you know what? I actually wanted the Japanese version, Super Vanicom version, because it is actually supposed to be a little bit different. I think the music is better in the Super Cat Famicom version. But still, you know, I paid... 75 quid for this. The Super Famicom version goes for over 100 pounds. It's funny how it changes. You know, some Super Famicom games are cheaper, some are more expensive, and that's probably why. I think the Super Famicom one is different. I think it is a lot better, the music's better. But still, you know, I've heard this is a really cool game. I've heard it's rock hard, but that's okay. Uh, it's called Biometal. It's a side-scrolling shooter with some awful, awful, awesome graphics. Awful, I was going to say, awesome graphics. And I don't know about the box art, it's not great. I think the Japanese version of this is a lot better. The box art, I mean. And it's in pretty good nick, though. It's got a little crease there in that corner, that's the only thing. It's been squashed or dropped on that corner. Which is a shame. Otherwise, other than that, it's it's mint. Let's have a look inside. Yeah, inside, it's lovely. We've got a mission handbook. With uh, some artwork inside, not much, just some portraits and some screenshots. So I'll show you the portraits. And we've got some screenshots. But other than that, there's no other artwork in there. But still, I'm chuffed to get this in the collection. I know Cyber Snake's got this, haven't you, Jay? I'm sure you have. Uh, maybe you can let me know what it's like. Well, I'll be playing it soon anyway. But oh, there's a little poster here as well, which is cool. What's the poster of? Biometal. That's quite nice. Oh, that's right. Two Unlimited do the music to this game. <laughs> it's just quite odd, isn't it? That is weird. That 
that is it, isn't it? Two and Ninety did the music to this, but the Japanese version they didn't. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on this. I will do a gameplay of this of this game and a little bit of a history of it because I, I think there's um, some interesting stuff to know about it. So um, definitely look into this game. Definitely want to do a gameplay of it, but I've got a, a cooler gameplay uh, this week to do. So hang on in there, guys. Um, got one more box to open. Nice, like that, very, very much. Next box, similar sort of size. Another SNES game, what do you reckon, guys? Have to come old screwdriver. <laughs> old screwdriver. Not the best way. I think I have some scissors, but I left them down in the house. Where to open the screwdriver is quite sharp, actually. Be surprised. There we go. Another SNES game. this guys I know which one it is it's a bit of an odd one this because actually the game is not all that <laughs> oh, so why do you buy a game that's not all that because I am curious about it because it, it is one of my favorite arcade games and I just want to know or see why it didn't do, do so well it isn't as good as the arcade version I mean it's big differences apparently but I, I love this game so much in the arcade I had it on in one of my jammer cabs, it's a CPS2 cart, it's by Capcom. It's one of their best side scrolling walk and run, right, and fight games, you know what I mean? With the, the alien versus predator theme, alien versus predator, guys. Awesome arcade game, absolutely fantastic. If you haven't played it, go out there and play it. But the SNES game, not quite sure. Um, I picked this up fairly cheap, 65 quid, so it's not that cheap, but you know, it's money I'll get back again, you know, it's it's one of those things, you can play it, you can move it on, it's almost like free rented, isn't it, really, you never lose your money on these type of games, not on a SNES game anyway, so I picked it up, I want to play it and I want to like it, I'm, so I will do a gameplay of this, video, of this game, just to see what it's like, um, the artwork's not too bad, Um, yeah, it's not too bad. It's not the worst. And it's got some screenshots on the back. Um, so I'm really interested to see what this plays like because I just absolutely adore the arcade version. I just thought I've got to pick this up just to see what it's like. I know I've read some of the views and they're not all that, so I know what I'm to expect. But I just got to see it for myself to just see what it's like. Maybe I'll do a compare. Maybe we'll play this right and then we'll go and play the arcade version back to back and you can see what I mean anyway that's it guys for this week pick up wise what should we do now well we're going to do the gameplay now then after the gameplay we do my uh, the art of box art so get on to the gameplay this is actually another pick up that I got in the week and it's a game again that I was quite intrigued about it's a lot of uh, not a lot of hype about it, but there is a lot of talk about it. It's quite a cool game. Um, it's got a really cool box art. I really love the box art, and I really love the character. Um, it's Super Famicom. It's not that rare. It's quite easy easy to obtain. It did come out on the PAL, and it did come out in America. I managed to pick up the Japanese version. It's called Hagane. I think that's how you pronounce it. That's how I pronounce it. It's got some awesome box art. Look at the box art, guys. He's like a robot ninja, I think. And that's the guy you control, Hagane. 
man, look at that. Just look at that box art. It's all hand-drawn sort of characters in there, bosses and whatnot. It's got a kind of Prometheus feel about it as well, you know, these sort of statue type characters here. I don't know, it's really, really weird. Even that guy there looks like um, um, the character we've just seen, um, the Predator. Look at his mouth. This guy here. Looks like the Predator. So they've taken a lot from probably Western films as well as the Eastern feel about it as well. I have played it a couple of times before I put this gameplay on it. Now, I've really enjoyed it. It is really, really hard. Um, but I'll go into a little bit more detail once we've played it. So I just want to play through it with you. For the sort of, this might be my third time, okay? Um, so we'll play through it and then we'll have a chat at the end and just have a talk about it and I'll, I'll let you know what I think. But for now, let's play a bit of Hagane. Pretty cool. <laughs> Right, here we go guys. Super cool looking character. First thing you notice is the music is pretty cool. And every button on your pad has a has some the function in the game. I've never known a game where every button on your pad does something, which is really, really cool. So I can swap my weapons around. Very cool first stage. I say it's, it's, it's not as hard as Ghosts and Goblins and games like that. I think, you know, once you get to know the levels, where everything is, it's 
to be one of those games you're going to keep coming back to and getting better and better and further and further each time. Oh, I shouldn't have pressed that. There's weird sort of black gooey monsters going on here. Not really sure about. Oh, Shoulder pads do a sort of backflip, which is pretty cool. Every button's got sort of some function in the game. Oh. Pretty cool game, eh? I really do enjoy this. Each time I play it, I've got further and further, so this is about as far as I've got now. I'm trying to get my next weapon up. Oh. You want to kill these guys because if you fall down the bottom, they'll still be there. Ah, 
Ah, I died again in the same place. I can't believe it. These are bits and games I don't like, I'm not really good at platformers. I'm a bit impatient when it comes to this sort of thing. I've never got this far in the game, which is awesome. Oh, sugar. <laughs> I just ran off the edge. Oh, man, that is hard. Oh, hold on. save or some sort for that point is there probably not <laughs> really really enjoyed that so what did you think guys I really enjoyed that game and um, it's uh, surpassed all the reviews that I've read on it especially super play which was the magazine I bought back in the day this was a really cool magazine and it was the first sort of magazine that had this sort of Eastern Japanese manga art I've never seen before so it was all really cool stuff to read up on and in here they reviewed Hagane and I think I've mentioned it before in one of my other videos because I think I picked up this magazine and showed you one of my pickups um, they've given it a pretty poor uh, write-up and I do, I do think some of these um, reviewers what do you call them uh, that review these games they don't have to talk some rubbish I tell you I mean it's like they're trying to write for Private Eye or the Daily Mail or something. All these clever words and writing and it 
doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You just want to hear about the game. And it's like they're trying to be too clever with the words. And this re this review just makes no sense whatsoever. So I normally go straight to the numbers, which is there. Can you see that, guys? They've given it a 74. He focused in there. 74 they've given it, which I think is pretty poor. Um, for starters, graphics they've given 77. Well, I think the graphics are really cool. The only thing I would say, some of the sprites do repeat themselves a little bit. Those little tur turtles or whatever they were, walking on them. There's too many of them floating about. But overall, I mean, I think looking at some of these pictures here, some of the end of level bosses look really cool. So I'm going to certainly give it an 87 for the graphics. The sound I thought was really, really good. I enjoyed that kind of Eastern feel about the game. It had kind of a samurai, early sort of traditional music about the game. It really gave it some atmosphere. I like that. Again, they only gave it 73. I'm going to give the sound a 90. I really enjoyed the music and the sound to the game. Um, also, I enjoyed the graphics. You know, the explosions were really cool. Um, and that's what the SNES did really well. I think a lot of the explosions in on a lot of Super Nintendo games look really good. Um, gameplay, um, they've given it a 70. Well, I thought the gameplay was brilliant. Great use of all the buttons. How can you give it a 70? I mean, how many games do you know that use all of the buttons? Like the shoulder buttons, all four of the, the, the main buttons were all used in the game. I just thought it was really, really cool. Game life, 79%. Well, I'm going to keep coming back to this game. And I just want to get further and further in it. Unless it gets to a point where it just gets so silly and so hard. But are you, it's one of those games that you do feel that any mistake or any of your deaths in the game are always your mistake. You know, it's not the game's fault. It's always your fault. Because I think the controls are really responsive. So, yeah, I think that the game life on it should be a lot higher now. What did I give the game life? I gave the game life 90. I've written this down after I played it. And and overall I'm gonna give the game um what should I give the game? They've given it 74 the overall score. Well so far I'm gonna give it an 89. And that's just going on what I've done so far. You know I think I might give it a higher score if I get further in the game but I can get past that bit at the end. I mean that is frustrating as I said I don't like Platform parts in the game where you've got to jump over stuff. I find that really irritating and sometimes You know that really isn't your fault. It's just some stuff are placed in in the wrong Places and you've got to kind of try and take like a leap of faith and I hate that in the game You never know what's on the other side But overall, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'd give it a definitely an 89 really really cool game um, So let's have a look at the box. I guess you want to know how much I paid for it first I paid a hundred quid for this game last week, and I thought that was a bargain. That was free uh, to post, so hundred quid all into my door. I thought was really, really good. I mean, I've seen these Super Famicom versions usually go for about 130, if not more, 150 quid, depending on condition. Um, the PAL version, silly money, two, three hundred quid. You know, why would you buy that? I mean, it's crazy. Um, for a smaller screen, slower speed, just doesn't make any sense. The American version, um, again, goes for a lot more. I think you'll pay 200 quid for it, but as far as I know, it's pretty much the same game. Um, but I really like the box art on the Japanese version. You can't beat it. It's so Japanese. With a game like this, you, you've got to own the Japanese version. Look at that. It's so cool. Look at the box art. And this is art of box art this week. It has to be. You know, I've played this awesome game, I've brought this awesome game, I've wanted it for quite a while, I was really interested to see how it played and I was really happy with it actually and I can't recommend this enough, it's really cool. You may think 100 quid is a lot but that's what it goes for, it goes for that all day long, you know, it's not going to go for any less unless you know someone really doesn't know what they're talking about but you know, you expect to pay 100 quid on over guys, I just got lucky with this one. But yeah, look at the box art, it's really really cool. And the back, again, as I showed you earlier, uh, some of the best box art I've ever seen on any game. Really like that. And the game matches the box art. It's just absolutely awesome. Did you notice the bit at the beginning with the pistons? They were kind of like two alien heads. They were like two Easter Island heads going up and down at the beginning of the game. 
they're like pistons because he's a robot. So I guess they were getting the robot going and then his eyes lit up. I thought that was really cool. Um, and the last thing I just wanted to show you was the instructions. Really nice addition as well. Same as the box art on the front, but some really nice little drawings in here. Um, yeah, there's a nice nice picture of Hagani there. He reminds me of uh, Yoshimitsu, is it, in uh, Tekken? The guy with the samurai. I always used to play that guy. Really cool though, isn't he? And then um, we've got some of his moves. I mean, you can pretty much figure it out. You don't need to read any of this. You can find it on the internet anyway, guys, but I figured it all out for myself. You notice I was doing the sliding underneath the enemies. That was quite handy. Jumping up and doing the bomb to, to reach those uh, enemies that were higher up in the game. You know, I worked it all out. It wasn't too much of a problem. Even the jump, I figured it out after a while. Um, you just jump and then hold the button down. And jumps like spinning further up. Which is really cool. Yeah, it's just nice. Really like it. Here's some nice art of the. Uh, I guess these are some of the end of level bosses. There must be. I haven't met yet. This is quite intriguing. This level here. I like the graphics there. So there's a lot to the game. The interesting how many levels they are. But super play. Terrible review, I thought. Absolutely diabolical. So, the, their reviews in these magazines don't always go on them, guys. I mean, they do a top 100 game super play, and I wouldn't, about a third of those games, I wouldn't put in my top top 100. But still, it's not dissing the magazine. I just think maybe it's the magazine of its time, but looking back on a lot of them games now, Maybe they didn't put a lot of time into this game. You never know what happened back in the day. Perhaps they didn't even have the game. They're just writing. It seems to me they were just writing about a game they'd heard about. They hadn't even played it. And it's probably what they did back in those days. Anyway, that's it, guys. Hagani. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I thought it was really, really cool. Anyway, that's it for this week, guys. I just want to mention um, Revival coming up, obviously, on the 28th, 29th. I shall be there with hopefully some of my Nintendo arcade machines. I'm hopefully taking a couple of my cocktails, which would be really cool. I'll be there for Saturday and Sunday. I'm staying the night. So, um, yeah, come over and see me, guys, if you're there. Say hello. Um, and that's about it, really. Oh, just about the games room, really. My games room. Um, yeah, over the next week or two now, things are going to start being changing around here. So I don't know how many videos I'm going to be able to get out. I hope to do a little diary. Maybe just set the camera up while I'm moving stuff around. I don't know how interesting it's going to be, but at least you'll see what I'm doing and what I'm up to. But um, if I can fit a gameplay in, I will. If I can't, please don't hassle me. It's just I'm, I'm going to be busy here, guys. It's a busy time of year as well with work and stuff. But I've got a lot to sort out here. I've got a lot to sort out for revival. So I might miss a video next week. If I do manage to get one out, then that's a bonus. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video this week. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate you watching, guys, and adding comments. Some really nice comments from you guys. Really appreciate it. So, yeah, keep buying those Nintendo games, guys, and uh, see you soon. See you at Revival.